Oh, what the heck, I figure I'd do one more and then I'll give you guys a break. But anyway, it's Matt again and moving on with the ranking Beatle album songs. In order of preference, we come to the 1966 masterpiece Revolver. This is uh, came out uh, number one on both sides of the world there, of course. Came out August 5th in England, August 8th in America. This is, um, again, one of those can be hard to put them in order because everything on here is so good. Uh, arguably, uh, obviously the best album in 1966. And um, Beatles, probably the Beatles' best album, probably the best album ever made overall, even though my personal favorite is the Beatles' second album, but that's sort of like, uh, like I said on a couple of videos ago, I prefer the movie Help to the movie Hard Day's Night, even though I'm fully aware that Hard Day's Night is the technically better movie. I love Hard Day's Night, that's a 10 too, but uh, this this would, you know, Beatles' second album is my favorite, followed by number two best album ever is The King's Village Green, but this is this is uh, you know if you're going to be technical from an artistic standpoint, from a musical uh, innovation standpoint, and just good music, this is probably the best album ever made. So uh, yeah, and this was right when they uh, came out in August, right right about the time they played their last concert in August in San Francisco, and play any uh, songs from this album in concert, unfortunately. Uh, kind of a shame that they never did tour again. Would have been neat to have seen the Beatles and touring in 1969 and playing some of these later songs, but that didn't happen, and they weren't getting along by that point anyway, unfortunately. But um, yeah, just uh, uh, this is also the last album where the track listing varies between the American and the British albums. From here on out, America would get the regular running order of the albums. Great cover, iconic cover, <clears throat> great back cover. This look really cool there. Um, so, yeah, let's get to the rankings. Number 14, I have 14 songs on here. Number 14 is Yellow Submarine. It's a song a lot of people don't like, a song that gets a lot of, uh, this is an embarrassment, this is a sore spot of the album. Uh, doesn't belong on here, kind of like Sloop John B on... Another album that came out in 1966, Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. That's uh, um, uh, Mean Mr. Mayo Joe. That's his favorite album of all time, of course, Pet Sounds. But, but uh, you know, I, I give it to him because uh, Re Revolver is kind of like uh, the White Album in a way in that they try a variety of music, musical styles and, and uh, experimentation, and it's got everything in the kitchen sink thrown in here. Uh, so they wanted to write a kid's song, fair enough, and they do a good job of it, and I'm sure it's, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I liked it when I was a little kid, and I guess if you're a little kid, it's a good song, and uh, probably better than most of the kids' songs written. Uh, you know, I, I, I can live with it. It works in the movie pretty well. It came out a couple of years later, which I haven't seen in ages, but just as a standalone song, eh, you know, Eh, I can take it or leave it. So it comes in at number 14. Number 13 is one of uh, George's three songs on the albums. He's uh, got his most credits on an out Beatles album here so far. So I think, is that right? Yeah. Um, maybe you had three on help. I'd have to look. I'm too lazy to go do that right now. But anyway, love to you. Um, you know, when I was younger, I thought that was kind of a boring song. Now I like it quite a bit, um, so I can't say anything bad about it. It's a great song. It's just a, a case, again, of there's so many great songs on here that it's hard to rank them in any order, and if I check back with you next week, I might have it in a different running order, but uh, it's a great song. I just think there's, uh, you know, 12 songs better. Number 12 is another great song, but it comes in uh, there at number 12 is I'm Only Sleeping. Got some great Lennon vocals, uh, really, really evokes the mood of being very tired and, and run down. Backwards guitar stuff is really cool in it. It's a great song, but uh, I put it at number 12. Number 11, I Want to Tell You, which is a second George song, and a really great song. It's a good vocal by George and a good, uh, good energetic uh driving song. I like it a lot. 
So number 10, and I used to like this more than I do now. I still like it, but uh, She Said, She Said, one of the Lennon songs. Um, I still like it. I guess I just uh, like it a little less than I did when I was younger for some reason. Number nine, a great uh, piece of sh sunshine, uh, upbeat pop, Good Day Sunshine. Paul singing on there. Sounds uh, sort of kind of like it would fit on the great... Uh, Face to Face album by the Kinks, which also came out in 1966, which I would rate as the second best album of 66 behind Revolver. Uh, yeah, it's cool. It's uh, love the opening. That's one another one that I was not a 45, and I was surprised. But anyway, um, Paul comes in again at number eight. Got to get you into my life. A kind of Motown soul sounding song uh, that was covered by a couple of Motown uh, soul artists and some other soul singers, but uh, good song, great song, got to get you into my life, uh, just a cool, really cool jazzy soul rock song there, so, yep, and Paul again comes in at number seven, uh, Eleanor Rigby, great song, I love it, it's, um, this is sort of in uh, line with his songs like Yesterday, I think this is a better song than Yesterday, I uh, love the string quartet and the singing and the lyrics, the, uh, you know, poetic imagery that it evokes. Um, so, yeah, Eleanor Rigby at number seven, and I know that quite a few people would have that rated closer to the top, but um, but I don't. Number six, and this is a song that a lot of people rank toward the bottom on this album, but I have it at number six, Dr. Robert, great John vocal. Love the guitar, love that clipped guitar. I think by this point they had uh, weren't playing Rickenbackers so much anymore, and they had moved to um, Epiphones and Fender guitars. But just that that sort of a sharp clip guitar riff or or playing, really like it's it's a great rock and roll song. It's um, kind of has a little hint of country sound to it, sort of a halfway between country and halfway between rockabilly. Uh, but it's a uh, nice rock and roll song overall. Um, love the uh, organ part and the sort of celestial singing harmony of the well, well, well parts. Just always really like that song. It's weird to me because, again, I uh, grew up on the American albums, as I said, and to me, uh, Dr. Robert and some of these other songs on here uh, sound kind of weird being on Revolver because I'm used to them being on that other great album that the Beatles went in the studio in 1966 and made, the great Yesterday and Today album, which of course I kid because that's one of the capital Frankenstein albums, but uh, I'm alright with it being here because the American Revolver, he kind of gets uh, the short shrift to the John songs because most of those were put on Yesterday and Today, so um, it's fine to be here. Great song, I love it. Uh, number five is another John and Your Bird Can Sing. Just uh, just a ringing harmonic, uh, the multiple guitars, and and just the uh, joyful jump around energy of it, and uh, the weird uh, elliptical obscure lyrics, and uh, just always always love that song. So that's number five. Number four, Paul shows up again, here, there, and everywhere. Just a really. Uh, Beautiful love song, and um, you know, a couple of friends of mine played that at their wedding. I remember a few years back, but I uh, always liked that. I like just the music of it, the key changes, and the singing, and uh, just a just a really uh, beautiful song. And uh, number three is again Paul for no one. I love the music. I love the French horn in it. Um, and um, the um, you know Paul gets accused sometimes of being sort of glib, and uh, those I think here, there, and everywhere, and for no one are a couple of good examples of when he really uh, you know seems sincere and puts his heart on his sleeve, which is uh, usually more John's territory. But it shows that he can do that too when he wants to. And um, I'm guessing you know he'd broken up with Jane Asher around this time, so maybe it's uh, something to do with that. Number two is Tomorrow Never Knows, an incredibly 
a brilliant and weird song and it sounds incredibly strange and otherworldly and and uh, uh, complex and puzzling even today 50 years later I can only imagine what uh, kids in 1966 kind of like what I said about uh, revolution number no. nine in another video but kids in 66 running out to buy the new Beatles album and this is the last song on the album and getting through all these great songs and then Tomorrow Never Knows shows up at the end and would have loved to have been around to see the expression on people's faces. Just, you know, what in the world is this crazy, you know, what, you just don't, this don't sound like she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's great. Um, this showed up in an episode of Mad Men. They had to pay $250,000 to be able to play like 30 or 40 seconds of the song, which is, I guess, why you don't see a lot of Beatles songs in TV shows or movies, or when you do, it's usually someone else singing them, not the Beatles, because apparently they're pretty pricey. Um, great song, and, and just, uh, it, it's weird and out there, but it's also still accessible to some point. And I, I know that... Um, Looks like I was flipping people off there, I just noticed. Don't mean to do that. Um, I know there's some people that were of the age of teenagers when the Beatles were around, uh, you know, that were in the 13, 14, 15 year range in 64 and all and grew up with the Beatles, that uh, some of them, this is kind of where they say, you know, I like the early stuff, but then when they got weird, I kind of lost interest. So, but... I don't know. It's a great song. And that leaves number one. Great guitar. It's just cool as hell song. It's just a love it. It's my favorite. It's Taxman, of course. George's third song on here. Great opening to the album. When I did that contest about the favorite snippets of songs, that, that opening, that one, two, three, and someone coughing is just a, a great, uh, one of my favorite little two seconds of music snippet. Uh, the song overall is just, just flat out badass and cool. Um, my favorite George album, uh, George song, uh, bar none overall, including his solo work and his Beatles work. And one of the, one of the great openers, uh, album openers in history. And so, uh, yeah, uh, the album is obviously a 10. Um, uh, most of the songs on there would rate a 10. Yellow Submarine, I might give like an 8 to everything else a 10. Uh, what else can you say? So, uh, I did want to make note, kind of unrelated, but um, people that I've talked to that play music, that are musicians, that are in bands, local bands that do, uh, you know, just not anyone famous, but just cover band type bands around Fort Worth and stuff that uh, do covers of old 60s songs and I've, I've heard him say not so much Revolver because this is this is another huge sonic leap even from from Rubber Soul just a year earlier uh, and not but Rubber Soul was uh, December and this is really eight months later um, but yeah but saying that when they uh, learning those early Beatles songs like the 63, 64, 65 period songs said they sound pretty straightforward and basic and simple and I've heard people say several people that I don't know anything about music but saying um, that learning those early Rolling Stones and other 64, 65 period songs is if, if you can play music they're pretty easy to figure out and learn but they said the Beatles songs even in the early days sound straightforward and simple but when you get into trying to figure them out you learn pretty quick that what looks simple is actually pretty complex and they're pretty hard to learn and of course uh, that's not talking about this period and forward this talking about the 64 65 songs so I guess that's just part of the wonder and magic of the Beatles that they were able to make something uh, look simple and understandable when it's really underneath pretty complex um, anyway, uh, yep.